How's it going guys, it's Paradise here. If you have clicked on this video, that's because you are a new Catwalk C2 user, either the core model or the plus model, and you're looking for a ground up tutorial from all the biggest of basics to more advanced features to get this working with all games and just how to configure it. So I'm gonna have a whole tutorial here for you. I will have timestamps in the description. However, I do recommend watching this all the way through as there are a lot of quirks with the Catwalk and a lot of need to knows on how it works. So let's get started at the absolute basic, which is you've just built your catwalk, you've installed their cat gateway software, and you have just paired your sensors, and you're ready to test this guy out and get into some games here. So of course, before you go into any game, you need to have green dots across the board here. I'm even guilty of this to where I've gotten in a game, my treadmill here went to sleep, and I was thinking, why am I not walking? And it's because you have to, on your C2, click the recenter button. So that's where you installed your directional sensor up top and you have to physically press that button and shake your shoes to wake them up. And then it will be green across the board. So always start with making sure it is on. The other most important thing is making sure your configurations are correct. It's a big basic, it's a big oversight that can get you, which is if you go to the configuration section, um, default profiles, I'm just gonna click on and off real quick to reset this one. Default default, you'll notice that Catwalk likes to default to trackpad touch as the walk action. And the reason for that from what I read in their Discord is that this was originally developed with the, um, I believe they said the Vive in mind, and that's what uses the trackpads. And so you will have to go in here and change it to your joystick because you're using the meta touch controllers or um, you know possibly a different set of controllers. You need to set this accordingly for what works with your controller. Your sprint action, you'll need to bind that to you know trackpad click as well if you're using meta controllers like me. Uh, and your jump action, you will set depending on game. But you do need to bind up the controls properly or it will not work. Now, there's another sneaky kind of secret here with some of them, which is certain games for me, you have to really check this to when you go in game, and I am going to demonstrate this in just a moment here. But even if you add a game in, so for me, in this case, I had to add from another platform contractors, I have that on Oculus, and I wanted to use the catwalk with it. So I added a profile in, and I set my binds. And I noticed something when I got into contractors, which was it wasn't actually using the profile that I thought it was. And what I'm gonna do to show that off is I'm gonna boot a game just to demonstrate this. So I'm in Steam VR right now and I'm gonna boot Ancient Dungeon. And we're actually gonna come back to this game as a workaround because I could not get this one working. I have it through Oculus as well. So we're gonna come back to this one. But you'll notice when you boot into a game and in your catwalk configuration, you have a profile for it, it should say Ancient Dungeon current game. That's how you know that this profile is working for your current game. And so I'm going to close out of this game. Again, we will be coming back to this game for testing purposes later in the video, but you need to verify that when you boot up a game, it says current game. So sometimes on occasion, software can have trouble getting hooked into by the cat gateway software here. Contractors was one of those for me. So instead of making a custom profile, what I actually did is I went to default here and you'll notice I made a contractors profile right there. So that it works for contractors just fine and I can walk just fine because it would not hook in. You know, another issue is I have No Man's Sky on Game Pass and Xbox does not let you add exe files from game pass it's kind of anti tinker feature it's it's for modding purposes they wouldn't let me add no man's sky so i went to my default right here and there's no man's sky right there my profile that i made for that game and it works just fine again you'll still every single profile you make you will have to go to game config you will have to bind it up with your current controllers and then that's where you can start messing with settings i'm not going to go into an in-depth on the settings because they actually have really nice descriptions if you hover over the question marks and you just sort of have to play with it game to game and decide what you like best so definitely recommend reading these and and really experimenting with your settings but yes you can manually add your games from steam or you can do it from other platforms, and it may not hook in under the actual EXE you added. So that's where you can go back to default and create a profile under default to use in that game. So that's another really big one that might get you and one to watch out for. 
But let's say you added your proper exe file, you try default, you tried your profile, and it's just still not working on that game. What do you do? So there's a big caveat with this, which is it was originally designed for Steam. It doesn't mean Oculus games and Oculus exclusives can't work with this, but it does mean they're much more finicky, they're much more touchy with it, versus Steam is almost plug and play with a lot of its games. So what the solution then becomes is getting these games to run through Steam and not Oculus. And you might be wondering how to do that. Well, there are two methods. The first one, and I tell myself in my head when I'm doing it, when in doubt, compatibility mode it out. And what that means for me is putting this into Windows compatibility mode. So we're actually gonna revisit Ancient Dungeon because you'll notice Ancient Dungeon is here in my Oculus library and it would not work. I tried with the default profile, I tried with the EXE like how I showed you guys and none of it would work. I could not walk in this game. So what I did instead is I put that file into compatibility mode. So if you wanna figure out where the files are located, you would click the three dots on your game, you would go to details and it's gonna tell you your file path. In fact, you can just copy that right to your clipboard, which is super nice. You can click up top, you can control V, and it'll put you right where you need to go. In fact, I'll test that by getting out of all of this. Like, let's go to, um, you know, anything, just this PC. And I'm gonna control V, and it puts me right where I need to go, where the EXE is, and that was copied from right here. So you go to your EXE file. Now, if you're unsure which file this is, I highly recommend so normally your file explorer looks like this. You will want to go to view and over on the show hide section here, there is file name extensions and hidden items. You will want to have both of those checked. That way you can see your exe file. You will right click, click properties, compatibility, and you will check this box, run this program in compatibility mode four. It defaults to Windows 8, you will want to put that to Windows 7. You will want to check the box for run this program as an administrator, hit apply, hit OK. You will then go to Steam and you will manually add this game as an external game into your Steam. And that can be done with the add a game in the bottom right, bottom left, sorry, add a non Steam game, browse, and then you would just go to that same section where your ancient dungeon exe is and you would open it and add selected programs. I'm not going to do that because it's right here for me. But once you have it added in, you will right click hit properties and you will add the launch command dash open VR. That's it. That's the only command you need right there. But there is another very important thing with this. Uh, my headset clicked off. I'll demonstrate that later. Another very, very important thing though, is you will need to pull up steam settings and you will need to make sure under, I believe it's developer. Yep. Current open XR runtime needs to be steam VR. If you're using this feature. And you're going to get yelled at by Oculus every time. You'll notice up here, Oculus is not set as the default OpenXR runtime. Ignore that. Don't set it as the default. Keep Steam as the default if you want your treadmill to work with these games. Another very, very important tip, by the way, this is hugely important, and this got me a few times. Under Startup Shutdown, Manage Add-ons, you need to make sure Cat in Steam Executor is on. If Steam crashes for any reason, it may disable this add-on. You may have experienced this before with gamepad support where Steam crashes and it disables gamepad support. After every crash, check this section. Always make sure that is on or Cat VR cannot hook into Steam correctly and you won't be able to walk. So always check that. But as long as you have it as the OpenXR runtime and on your startup shutdown, it is enabled, it will work at that point. And that's why I told you we'd revisit Ancient Dungeon, is that now that I boot into it, I can play it and I can walk in it without issue and I've been testing it extensively. There is a huge downside to compatibility mode though, which is in online multiplayer games, it will not allow your multiplayer to work. So you might be wondering to yourself, well, I, I wanna be able to boot my games and play multiplayer on this treadmill, what do I do? So in that case, instead of doing compatibility mode, you can use this awesome piece of software called Revive. And I can also link that in the description for you guys. But Revive, what this piece of software does is it takes your Oculus library. So this is my entire Oculus library right here. And I'll, I'll pull them up one to one just to show you guys there. And it allows these to be run through Steam. So you don't need to put them into compatibility mode. You do not need to go add the launch command, how I showed you. You can just boot them straight into Steam. If it still doesn't work with this, that's where you have to do compatibility mode. So if it's a multiplayer game at that point, 
it is what it is. <laughs> it won't work. Um, but uh, between Revive and then between using compatibility mode, there is not a single game I have not been able to get working with this. That includes Unity VR demos that I've done some testing with. That even includes um, Attack on Quest, if you guys have ever seen that one. And in order to run this one, for instance, so if it doesn't pop up here, because Attack on Quest is normally a uh, Quest 2 standalone game that's an Attack on Titan game, but there was a PC port that I wanted to try out. Revive now appears at, under the carrot here with all of your other stuff. So you would right click. In fact, I messed up actually. Let me go back one. I would have to quit out of Revive. You would have to run Revive as an administrator and that'll pull up. And then I can use Inject and I can go to my attack on quest and hit the exe and it will use revive to inject it and run this game through steam vr and now it boots and it works with the treadmill now my headset's clicked off right now so we're staring at a wall that's okay it's just for purposes just to show you how revive works and what it can do so again instead of having a profile for contractors even with revive it wouldn't hook in i said okay that's fine i'll just use it under default contractors and i use revive to boot contractors into Steam. And then I can play at that point and move around just fine. So between compatibility mode and between Revive, even Oculus exclusives, you can force them to run through Steam and they will work on this treadmill. Now, the final tip that I have for you, and it's just like a noob beginner tip, anytime you enter a video game, recenter. <laughs> always, always, always recenter. Um, when I first got it, I started walking and it was making my character walk in opposite directions. So when I walk forward, I actually move backward. You need to calibrate. Always calibrate and recenter. And at that point, you will walk correctly. That can be done through this little menu right here. Calibrate. And again, if you're in the Quest 2, you can pull up your bar and you can, you can view your desktop. So you don't have to get off your treadmill to go do this. If you're in Steam VR, there's also a built-in menu as well to where you can calibrate from. But with all of these tips together, between using compatibility mode, adding it to Steam and launch options, using a third party piece of software like Revive to where you can even inject it into other games that may run through Oculus but are not a part of the library, I have managed to get every single game I own working on this treadmill. Now, the final, final solution I'll give you guys for modded content. I'm a big fan of VR modded content. Personally, I play a lot of GTFO in VR. And I also play Deep Rock in VR. Deep Rock is a tricky one because while it does run through Steam VR, it interacts with the Oculus menu. It's just a choice of the modding developers. I can only get this one to work by using Virtual Desktop. I would recommend familiarizing yourself with Virtual Desktop if you have never used it. But in that game's case, I can't use it even with because the compatibility mode doesn't allow me to access online. And Revive won't work because it already runs through Steam. It's strictly a result of the mod and how they made it. So in that case, Virtual Desktop is the only thing I could do to get that one running. So you would just boot up Virtual Desktop, boot it up um, through Steam VR, and you would make your profile. I believe I have one right there, Debrock Galactic, and you're good to go. So this is one of the few games that I had to use Virtual Desktop. Even GTFO worked out of the box for me and it's a modded VR game. Games like Resident Evil in VR, I got those guys down there. They worked out of the box as long as I binded them up correctly. So with that being said, if you guys have any additional questions, I really recommend joining their Discord. You can ask a lot of great questions, very helpful people in there. Uh, their support team is also a part of it. You can also drop some of the comments below if you're still having some trouble and I will do my best to help you. But hopefully this tutorial was helpful to you guys and uh, see you in the next one.